Hey guys, this is attorney Darren Miller, and here is my story. My parents were born in the Caribbean, and I was born in London. And at a very early age, I've always known that I wanted to be an attorney. I uh, had the opportunity, of course, to come over to the States. I lived in New York for a while, as I've laid out in my book, which you guys got to get. From there, we moved to, to Lubbock. That was a crazy story, a very interesting situation. Then we ended up in Houston, Texas in 1983. Houston was the, the great place for us. It was the, where we'd made our home, developed relationships uh, and our friends. That was the time where we really figured out what the plan was. I went to te Texas A&M University, Gigham, and graduated in December of 1992. I graduated from Texas A&M uh, in four and a half years. I just knew I was going to be going to law school. The only issue was, is it law school first, then business school to get my MBA? Because I always knew I wanted to be a lawyer that had his own firm. The problem was, if I went to go get my law degree, I know myself. I know how impatient I am. I know the fact that I want to go out and practice and show how good and tough and strong and to bring in some money. And I knew if I went to go get the law degree first, I probably would not get the MBA. So I went to University of St. Thomas and got my MBA in finance. And then I went to TSU Law School and got my degree there. At TSU, it was a very interesting experience. I'm very thankful to TSU Law School, to Thurgood Marshall, for giving me the chance, the opportunity to, to make friends, to learn about what the law is, to really challenge me with regards to what the practice of law is all about. And that's the exposure that I got, and I'm really thankful. So after, you know, I was with my my, my girlfriend slash fiance for a very, very long time. And so uh, one of the reasons that I was able to kind of extend it for a longer period of time was I said, well, babe, hold on. I don't want to do anything until after I go, after I finish law school and then after I pass the bar. And as soon as I pass the bar, okay, it is time. No more excuses. No more excuses. I was you know, as a guy, I was kind of content to kind of keep things going and not worried about all that. But as a female, I have to understand my wife. She's, she's been there through, through my MBA, through law school, through me struggling. And so she was time to, hey, you know, you know what? It's time for you to get serious. And so I did. Um, after I passed the bar, I, I got a ring, took it to the Transco Tower which is now the Williams Tower. And I got on one knee and I proposed to her. And of course she accepted and we got married. After getting married and then having my, my first son, um, you know, I was doing okay and coming right along. And then she lets me know a, a couple of years later that, hey, uh, guess what? I'm pregnant again and I'm pregnant with twins. And I'm like, wow, okay. You know what, D? It, now you, you really you kind of have to buckle down, and you got to get serious. And she had done a great job as a mother, keeping a job, coming home, and taking care of my son, and taking care of me, and all that stuff. But when the twins were coming, it's like, man, I, I don't want my wife to be working all day and then coming home and having to, to wrestle with all those issues. So it was my job then, OK, it's time for me to make more money and to get serious and to put us in a position to where when the twins do come that she's able to if she wants to stop working she can stay at home and that's going to require more effort more energy more time for me i buckled down i put in more effort i started making more money thankfully when the twins came she was able to quit her job and stay home which then of course put even more pressure on me because again while because I'm the only breadwinner. And now there's not just one and two of us, then there's Joseph and then the twins, there's just five mouths to feed. And so again, it's like, all right, D, you are a father, you're a leader of this law firm, you have to make this thing happen. It was pressure, 
But it was pressure on me that I, I relished in because I was, I was good at what I did. I was good with regards to handling the client issues and getting in the money and moving things forward. And so it was something that, even though it was a lot of work, um, I kind of figured out a system, right, to, to make things happen. And then what also kind of happened was I also started to understand my wife better, right? And I saw how hard she was even working and, and the, fact that, the fact that she was not working was created even more stress to her, which means I needed to do more. And so one of the things that I did was I decided to take the nighttime shifts. Right? So that at night, I would always be working with I said, babe, okay, after 8 o'clock, you go rest, you go do your thing, I'm going to take the kids. And so I took the feedings, I changed them at night, I got up with them, because I was already working. And I wanted her to get a good night's sleep. So when I wasn't there during the day, she could kind of do her thing. I wanted her to get some rest. And so I took the night shift, and I loved that, because at that point, I got to spend time not only with Joseph, my, who was a little bit older at that point, but then my new twins, and developing those relationships. And I see how close I am with them now, and changing their diapers, and doing the feedings, and taking all those responsibilities on. Man, I love that. And what is, it's interesting to me now, it's like, how could I have missed that? And those fathers that are not involved in their, parent, their kids' lives, and they're not doing those things, while you're out there having fun or drinking or doing whatever the heck you're doing, you're not developing those bonds, not only with your wife, but with your kids. And, and you miss out on so much. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so close and, and joined join with my kids, because when it was time for me to be there for them, I was there. And I love that. I love being a good father. In addition to having my own personal injury practice, one of the things that I did on the side was uh, also um, got involved in mediation work. And I know everyone says that and everyone does it, but when I get focused on something, I like to try and take it to that next level. And that's exactly what I did. I, I got contracts, um, I, I went to school, I got the certifications, then I got additional certifications in other areas of specialty, and I got contracts like with the EEOC to do mediations for them. I love that process, by the way. Um, the Texas Education Agency, I, I enjoyed that. With the prison system, I did mediations with those guys, as well as my own private practice with regards to doing it for the courts. I think probably the most rewarding thing for me was the education, uh, the, the Texas Education, uh, the, the special education mediations that I got involved in. Because in those situations, um, I was flying all over the state of Texas, um, and I was helping parents who had special needs kids resolve their differences with the district. Uh, many times they weren't getting certain services, uh, kids were falling behind, districts weren't, be, weren't able to understand relationships with regards to those particular parents. And what ended up happening, I was pretty good at it to where I was at one point the most requested mediator in the state of Texas as related to these issues. And so they would call me in to resolve really challenging issues um, that they had. The one memory that stands out, right, is that like I would fly to all these places like in Podunk, USA, and the, the, you know, some small school district in the state of Texas. And you know, when you go into these rooms, um, you would have the superintendent, the, the vice principal, the principal, the um, special education director. You'd have all these people on one side. And then on the other side, you have maybe a mom and a dad and maybe an advocate on the other. So it's just like all these folks with the district and then just, you know, a couple of people on this side of the equation. And then when I'd walk into the room, what I would always be met with, right? Because before this, I would be talking with on the uh, talking to these guys on the phone, and typically speaking, many people are just like, "Oh, you're th that look on their face was, oh, you're different than what we thought you were." I know what that meant. I, I'm I'm not crazy. I know what that meant. So when I would walk into these mediations, 
you know, people would kind of look at me like, oh, wow, we are surprised that you are who you are. No, I was black, right? They, they didn't have to say that, but I could, I could tell. That, those things wouldn't surprise me. But what I would make sure that I did, I'm going to leave these guys with an, an indelible impression with regards to what I know, how I do, the way in which I treat people, and me getting the job done. So that, because I would always try and leave it, whereas the next person that comes in, don't expect them to be a certain way. Instead of that, let them come in and then judge them on their performance by itself, on nothing else. Because by the end of every session that I was in, I would make sure that I took care of business, made sure that the deals worked out to the best of everyone that was involved and just made sure I left things substantially better than I found them. And I was able to do that in a lot of situations, especially with those special education mediation sessions. So here comes 2005, a very interesting year. Um, business is going well. Um, we're developed, we're hiring a few more people in the firm. Things are starting to take off. And then I'll never forget, I call home one day and you know my wife says hey guess what I'm pregnant and I'm like oh, what you know it was just a total shock because after we had the twins we essentially said okay we're done no more we're finished okay and because and I haven't said this before because we needed help we got help to have Joseph okay and we got help with regards to the twins. So we thought there was absolutely no chance with regards to having another baby the natural way. We just thought that with the doctors had said, no, it's just not gonna happen just because of certain things that I won't get into. It's just not gonna happen. And so it was a very interesting situation. I remember I got that call in the morning early, probably an hour or so into me getting to the office. And I just came right home because my wife and I were just like, what, what, what's going on? And so we, we had to decide what to do. What are we gonna do? Because our life was, in, we were in a pretty good routine. And you know, we were, we, things were going well. This was our plan. We were moving forward with it. All was good. Now another baby, diapers, night feedings, staying up late, paying for college, all that stuff for number four, come on, that's too much. And so we, we sat down and we had this discussion. We're like, um, do we really want to do this? Do we really want to do this? And I have to be honest with you, we came close to saying, I'm attorney Darren Miller, and that's D-Law.